I'm Robert Field, and I am fishing my way across all 50 states, living in an RV full time. Now I've made it to the legendary Black Hills of South Dakota, where I'll be fishing and exploring an area unlike any other. Got him, got him. You're watching Field Trips with Robert Field. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Field Trips and welcome to the Black Hills of South Dakota. I am so excited to be here. If you're new to Field Trips, basically I ditched the corporate grind, moved into a travel trailer full time, and now I'm fishing my way across all 50 states. And South Dakota was next on the list and everybody told me the Black Hills is where I needed to go. And so I just got into the area, haven't even gotten to my campground yet, but I just drove past this. Pactola Reservoir, absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous. But I think this is gonna be the first episode of what's gonna turn out to be a little mini series. We're gonna be doing some kayak fishing here in Pactola. We're gonna hit another reservoir called Sheridan and really fly fishing is kind of the name of the game. So I plan on whipping out the fly rod, slinging some bugs in some of the many creeks and streams that run through these mountains. We're also gonna be doing some hiking. The tallest peak east of the Rockies is right here in the Black Hills. We're gonna be checking out some caves. We gotta go see Mount Rushmore while we're here and the Crazy Horse Memorial. They're both in this area. We're gonna jump right into the fishing here in the Pactola Reservoir. Yeah. Rob. Warren, nice to meet you. Warren, good to finally meet Josh. you. Josh. Josh, great to meet you too, man. It's hideous here. Yeah, sorry for the disgusting. Yeah, terrible weather and horrible views. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, guys. So we made it here to Pactola Reservoir. Just absolutely hideous, disgusting area. Now it is so beautiful here. I met up with Warren Hansen and his friend Josh, and today we're going to be going out kayak fishing for pike. Pike is the main target. We're hoping to catch enough to take home to eat. I have never eaten pike, but I've been told by several people that they are delicious. Warren agreed. So we're hoping to get some of those, but also in here there's largemouth bass, and you were saying trout. Oh yeah. Oh, what kind of trout? Rainbow, brown, lakers if you want to go deep enough, but this time of year they're, they're 80, 100 feet down. 100 feet down, I'm not rigged up for that. But rainbows and brown trout here in the lake, which you can also catch fly fishing in the creeks. I plan on doing some of that. We'll talk about when we get out the water, what we're throwing for these pike, but that's kind of mission number one, see if we can't get a few. And we may switch it up, see what else we can get into, but uh, just amazing weather, gorgeous lake. Let's get after it. Right now. Do it. All right, so in general, pike are predators that like chasing bait fish. Now I've caught them on stuff on the bottom. I've caught one on a Ned rig before, but typically you're throwing stuff that's flashy, that's swimming. A lot of times it's pretty gaudy, They're typically not too line shy or bait shy. So starting off here with the spinner bait, real simple. Uh, I've also got a bigger swim bait tied on. They were saying cranks could work, work whopper ploppers, Ooh, top water could work. Oh, he just had a follow. That's a good sign. Been out here about one minute. So yeah, we're gonna kind of throw a variety of moving baits and see what, uh, what we can entice them to bite. But frankly, I haven't made a cast yet. It's hard to get over just how gorgeous this lake is. What a pretty area. Wow. The water temps about 60, 62 degrees, which where I come from is cold. For here, that is warming up and should have these pike on the move. And we already got one follow here in the first, I don't know, five casts for Warren. So we'll see. We're just going to kind of work through this area and hopefully find some, some hungry fish. Now, one thing I've, I've made the decision this morning to not run a steel leader these fish have very sharp teeth, so I may end up paying for that. But I think these guys got a few steel leaders if I, that ends up becoming a problem. Let me tie one on. Just had a little little bass just run up to this 
top water, this whopper plopper, and he didn't hit it, but he was definitely curious. And a lot of times, the bluebird skies, nothing's going to want to hit top water, but if one fish was willing to come up and look at it, it gives me some confidence that maybe uh, some more will. I'll try this for a bit and go back to something subsurface. It would be pretty epic to have a big pike annihilate this thing. It looks and feels so pikey over here on this side. There's tons of uh, bluegill or some kind of sunfish like all along the bank, all through there. Just tons of them. And there's grass, it's like big shallow flat, but... Got him! Got him! It's a pike! Finally! Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> Not like the net! Got him! All right, you guys. Well, I've been fishing just like the pikiest looking area you can imagine and have not had any luck. I've tried the spinner bait, I've tried the chatter bait, the whopper plopper, and it just seemed like, I mean, I'm in the right area throwing all the right things and they're just not hitting. So I thought maybe they're just not feeding very aggressively and I'll go to something a little more subtle. And that's what I did. Turned on, put on a paddle tail, a little underspin. And uh, that was maybe six, seven casts later in a little bit different area. Oh, golly. And there you go. First pike of the day, and he's not happy. And now these fish not only have teeth, they also have like kind of teeth in their gills. Pretty sketchy to handle these things, so I gotta be real careful here. But there it is. Not a monster, but solid eater pike, I would say. Good? So that guy is gonna go home and be dinner. This is the target. This is what we've been out here looking for. And man, just hit it like a freight train. Oh, yeah. Such, I mean, just smoked it. Oh, that's killer. But man, that feels good. Been kind of a ground. I mean, we've been out here maybe an hour. And I mean, with this scenery, slow fishing, really, it's nothing to complain about. It's just gorgeous. The weather is so nice. But maybe I'm onto something. I'll show you the lure once I kind of get this, get this cleaned up. But first, we're gonna get this guy secured so we can eat him later. All these like kind of little individual, huh? Wait, that out through the gills. Yep. Who makes that stringer? That's a good oh. question. I've been asked that before. I'm gonna cut his gill plate though. Yeah, bleed him out. Man, he did a number on this net. Like, <laughs> they do. Yeah, so that's why I got him on that underspin. I think I showed you before we launched. Did, yeah. So he's cutting his gills to bleed this fish out, which is good practice with any fish you're gonna take home to eat. But yeah, guys, so this paddle tail on this underspin. All right, now you can't let this Texas boy out fish on these pike, man. <laughs> Everywhere there's bluegill or some kind of oh, sunfish. Just, some bluegill yeah, there. yeah, I saw specifically for sure some bluegill and I just thought, man, man this is the perfect forage. Yep, it's all like spot. flat and grassy. I just thought, how am I not catching a pike? And uh, there it is. Feeling good, feeling better. Back at it. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna throw that some more. Well, I had said a little bit ago that a little bit of a breeze, a little bit of a ripple on the surface would probably do us a lot of good. I think that pretty much always helps any kind of fishing. And we got it. The wind now has picked up and it's swirling through this, these canyons, these gorges. And uh, it's gusting pretty dang hard. Right now we got a little bit of a break in it, but because of the topography here, it's kind of swirling different directions. I'm kind of getting blown back and forth and all around, spun around. But as soon as that, that breeze picked up was when I picked up that first pike. So I think I was right. And that breaking up that surface, you know, it just makes it harder for them to see the lure. And typically just some wind kind of gets stuff moving around. It gets the little plankton moving around, which gets the bait fish fired up and the bait fish getting fired up, get the pike fired up. So, and now the wind makes it a little more of a pain. Uh, casting for one. A little bit more of a pain kind of with boat positioning and stuff, but if it gets the fish biting a little more aggressively, then 
and it's very much worth it. So we'll see. Yeah, he said he hit it, but not too hard, so that might be good. Man, my kind of guys. Yingling brought beer, call it the victory beer for the first South Dakota fish. And these guys, I guess they're just going to try to catch a buzz since they're not catching anything else. Ah. <laughs> Union, break. Union break, there you go. Well, cheers, fellas. Thanks for bringing me out here. <laughs> Dude, the second it landed, I was so confused. <laughs> Monster. This little guy, little largemouth. I'm looking for a pike that could eat this guy, but hey, pretty sweet right here in the same area. And I'm sure there are pike down there eating those guys. Such cool rock formations. It looks like splintered wood, but that's rock. Really, really cool area. Yep. Another bass. <laughs> so it came up in this little cove to get out of the wind. It's ripping, you guys. It is ripping now. No more little breeze. Throwing this around some wood and chunky but little bass it's like one of the day it has been a bit of a grind with the weather you guys the wind is relentless this afternoon sweet little fish but pretty cool we literally just stopped into this little cove to get out of that wind for a second and that bass came off of that lay down right there i cast a country mile to get to it with the wind in my back she was sitting right under there but the pike have not been cooperating. I got the one earlier. And other than that, I think they've had one or two follows, but no, none others committing. So it has been a little bit frustrating and a lot of it workout. There we go. Didn't miss that one. And I just saw it under the surface. I couldn't tell what it was. It's feeling like another pike. Yep, yep, yep. Yes! I knew it! Man, I was sitting over there looking at this cove and it's just, it's not the kind of dramatic, you know, very high peak bank. It's just, just the kind of like valley, this little gully. And I said, that cove has to be shallower and I bet it's grassy with how grassy the bank is. I'm gonna run over there and try to try again for pike. And there it is! Man! It's so rewarding to come to a place you've never been, you know nothing really about, and make some little decisions, some little adjustments, some calls. I mean, I just braved crossing. It's the weekend, y'all. The, the boats are out in force. Uh, I just cross over here against the wind and through the traffic. It's telling these guys, I bet there's pike over there. And sure enough, number two on the day. Phew. Oh, and the lure just popped right out. Wow. Got lucky with that. There we go. About the same size as the first, maybe a hair smaller, but that's perfect eating size pike. I mean, we're out here looking for dinner and then you don't really want to eat the big, big ones. Oh, that's perfect. Money. Man, it feels good to have come over here, made a call. The boys stayed over there, but I just knew there had to be pike in this cove. Just from looking at it across the lake, I said, that's the kind of area, it's gotta be. And then I got here, the crankbait hit grass. I knew there was grass. Kinda everything just made sense. And that's just a handful of casts later. God, this wind is relentless, y'all. We're working for these fish today. The bite's not been easy. And the conditions have definitely not been easy. But we're getting it done. Phew, sweet. Oh man, that feels good. It's been a bit of a grind today, guys. I mean, both these guys are like apologizing, saying, man, it's not normally this tough. 
not normally this slow, but that's all right. We are in a literally paradise. This place is so gorgeous. Couldn't ask for better weather other than this wind. And I'm out here my first time fishing in South Dakota and we're getting on them. That's two bass, two pike, and that's dinner sorted now. I'm excited to try this thing. It doesn't smell appetizing. They're super slimy, gnarly teeth, gnarly mouths, but I hear they're delicious. All right, so while I was getting that second pike, Josh here nabbed one of his own, found a little shelf, and you saw the spinnerbait? Yep. Nice. We're not gonna starve to death. Dinner is pretty much sorted at this point. Oh, I just think it's so cool that these pine trees can grow like straight out of the rock like that, basically. Pretty wild. Just trolling around for trout right now, seeing if I can't find another good area for pike. But in the meantime, I've never caught a fish without hooks in the water. Might make a couple casts in the back of this. See if something's lurking up in here. by a big pike oh my gosh holy I felt a tug and I looked over and right under the surface was a massive pike twice the size of the ones we've been catching and he just followed it to the surface and bit me clean off they told me I might want to think about a steel leader and I was like you know man Man, and there it was. That was a that was Mac Daddy Pike. That's the fish we're out here looking for. And he just robbed me in the back of this cove. I literally, I mean, this isn't really the kind of area that we've been catching them in. But I trolled the crankbait into here. I don't know if y'all can even hear me over this wind, but I trolled into here and I figured, well, I gotta turn around anyway, so it's kind of easier to reel up the crankbait anyways. Might as well make a couple casts. That was a giant pike. I doubt that'll show up on the camera on my head mount, but I saw him clear as day. That was, that was like pushing 40 inch pike all day. Now I can't imagine he'll come back and hit something when he's got that plastic probably stuck in his mouth still, or maybe not. He might've just bit it clean off and has no idea, but right there, he followed it off the bank, I think. Oh my gosh, that got my heart racing, y'all. That was a, that's a proper pike. That's what we're looking for. Not really a good eater size, but just good fight size. That was the last of that underspin hook that I've got. So I just quickly threw this spinnerbait on to see if maybe he's still in the area. <sighs> wow. That was cool to see it. You know, if I just got bit off, I probably would have thought, oh, it's just another small pike. But no, that, there was nothing small about that fish. Man, golly, you guys, that fish was big. Whew. Man, that got my blood pumping. I'm gonna keep working this. I'm gonna swap out the trailer for a bigger, beefier one and darker color, because that's what I've been getting bit on. And uh, I'm gonna work this, this little cove I mean, it's just a tiny little pocket. I'm gonna work this some more. What is that? Oh, it's like moss or something. It is just crystal clear of the water out here. It's beautiful, like turquoise, kind of emerald green, but just so clear. Beautiful. What a beautiful place. Oh, there's a follow. There's a follow. Another pike just followed this thing too. That, that man, this place is loaded. Now that was that was more like the size we've been catching. But that was another pike just followed this thing all the way to the surface. You guys, the first cast with it. They're in here. 
But now see, he followed it and didn't hit it. The spinnerbait might just be too much today. Like they're just not aggressively feeding. That underspin was more subtle and it seemed to kind of get him to commit. I didn't have any follows on that. I just had bites. But man, a different pike followed this thing the very first cast after I tied this on. So there are more pike in this little cove, even if old granddaddy pike doesn't want to come back and hit something else. He is not alone in here, clearly. All right, guys, so while I was in there getting bested by grandpappy pike, Warren over here has been trolling around and picked up a rainbow trout. And that guy's gonna go home with us for dinner too. Delicious fish. That's sweet, man. They're trolling that crank? Yeah, that 13 fishing. Ah. Fish dog, a little different one, huh? A couple pike. He picked up another pike, so we got four pike and a trout. Yep. And a giant rock bass, man. We got a we can't eat all this tonight. No, we'll clean it all up. I'll bag it separately so you know it's what. Yeah, cool. I mean, trout is easy to identify. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The trout, I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna gut it and we'll do a whole yeah, yeah. Foil packet. Yeah. And then we'll do, uh, That's the way. Some dried pike. And uh, we have enough now. My wife can have some. Yeah. Oh, totally. Of course. Of course. Windy day. Windy day. It Man. Started off gorgeous and beautiful, and then. I thought it was about to lay down, and then on the way back over here, I didn't. Even, I was trolling and didn't have to pedal. I didn't. I felt like I was going too fast, not pedaling. It was. It's ripping out there. But hey, man. Grinding out some fish. Yeah, the last hour's been productive. Yeah, dude, I, I'm gonna, tonight, I'm gonna wake up at two in the morning like, no, it bit me off. That thing was so massive. That was like the. see him come up and just back it, that's amazing. Dude, yeah, that's why, I'm like not that mad about it because just seeing it was cool, but I'm kind of more mad about it because now I know what it was. All right, y'all, well, we got some ominous dark clouds kind of rolling in. And we have zero, I have zero cell service here, so we can't check the weather, we don't know, but anyways, we got a bunch of fish to clean, so we're gonna call it. But what a fun day out here, this was, this was a blast. Not the easiest day fishing of my life, but we grinded through it, brought up multiple species, including our target species. I get to leave here with the, the blessing of the story of the behemoth that got away. But all in all, I mean, just, it, it would be a treat just being out here in the kayak without fishing rods. This landscape is just so cool, I can't get over it. But we did have fishing rods, we caught some fish, so we're gonna head back to Warren's campground, which is not far, just right down the road. And he's gonna, they're gonna show us how to clean these pike. There's a special way to clean these pike. We also got a rainbow trout, and we got a giant rock bass. We're probably gonna end up cooking these a few different ways for you guys, we'll see. But we're about to be back, we're gonna get loaded up, and we'll see you guys at the fillet table at Warren's rig. Well, look at this, spoke too soon. We're right here, I mean, that's the ramp. And Warren hooked up right here at the end of the day. Just trolling on our way in. Is that another rainbow? Another rainbow trout. A little bit smaller than the other one, but. It's all right though, a little bonus fish on the way in. Can't complain about that. They're so pretty. Is there a minimum on those, or how's that work? Warren, the only one to manage to nab a trout today, and there's number two. Small one. It's a little, stock last year. It's a little guy, but hey, can't can't complain about the bonus fish right at the ramp. Look at this, just pulled up here to the ramp, and this kid's over here fishing, and he's got something big on. What'd you say it was? A northern? <laughs> Got himself a big old pike. Oh, oh, watch the teeth. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> nice. There you go. Nice work, bro. What's your name? Tanner. Tanner? Yeah. You mind being on YouTube, Tanner? All right, guys, so we've made it here to Warren's campground. It's called No Bad Days Campground, and today, very appropriately, was not a bad day. Now, we got a bunch of fish to clean. 
rock bass, rainbow trout, both of which I've done before, but these pike I have not, and there's a special way to do this, this fish. So one of these guys is gonna teach us how to do it. First, we're gonna clean off the disgusting fillet table that I keep in the bed of my truck. I'm embarrassed. This thing is white underneath, if I remember right. Yikes. <laughs> Not a bad little grocery run. You're just gonna gut those, you said, huh? Yep. I've cooked rainbow trout once that we caught in the White River in Arkansas. And that's what I did. I just gutted them and baked them in the oven, basically. There's just kind of like bloodline down in there. Once you get the gut cavity opened up and cleaned out, you basically open that up with a knife and then you can use like your fingernail or, or the knife to just scrape that stuff out. I guess it's like bloodline, right? That's mm -hmm. what that, yeah. Critical step. Yeah, hey, you don't want that in there. You don't want that in there. Warren here's got the setup. He's got two port, not one, two porches. Where the dogs are hanging out, wishing they could get to this fish. Yeah, that's beautiful. Look at that Pink meat. meat. Look at that. I mean, it needs to be clean, but that's really clean meat. That's gonna be delicious. All right, so we're gonna start this pike. By the not so expert trying to yeah. demonstrate. Warren has already claimed he is not the be all end all of doing this, but there's two different ways to do it. Do you feel a spine? Basically, you're saying there's like a Y bone that kind of makes it different than. Yeah, so to deal with the Y bone, I get two fillets off each side first, and then I deal with the Y bone. So you're gonna go ahead and cut the Y bone out and then deal with it I'm, after? Yeah, I'm getting the fillet and then I'm gonna take the Y bone out after. I mean, it looks good. It's like a nice, could be better, but clean meat. Well, I mean, I'm just talking about like the color of the meat, the mm -hmm. texture of it, like. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that was much better. Nailed it. Just yeah. like any filet, you know, you take the rib bones out. Right. We'll come back to the white bone at the end. Okay. But this belly meat is gonna come off. You can feel these rib bones. Incision first, just behind the rib bones. Just kind of ride underneath the rib bones. Yeah, just follow those bones. So cutting out these rib bones. There's one set of bones that sit just like this. I see them. Yep, you can feel them, they're right here. Yep. There's another set of bones right here that lay about like this all the way to the top of the fish. This coming down and this in here make a Y and these bones here run all the way to this edge. So what I do is start on the outside of these vertical bones. And again, I just make a nice cut outside of them so I have a guideline. I don't need a perfect filet from a northern. Walleye, sure. The northern, I'm gonna dice it up and usually cube it, fry it, whatever. Yeah. So I take this boneless piece right now. And, and I just get that out. And I just take it right off those top of the white bones. And I can kind of feel them and just ride that bottom. I like your method better. You wanna do these two? <laughs> <laughs> Like I said, I usually don't keep pike that much unless we have to, to eat, but they're good eating. So yeah. this piece now. Free and clear, no bones. Boneless, it's a nice piece of meat. Yeah, yeah. So now I come on this side of that Y. It's basically out of each fillet, you're getting two skinny fillets on either that side strip, of the And then you get this thinner piece, yeah. And then well, I'll tell you this, even if you did this absolutely perfect, undeniably zero mistakes, there would still be a bunch of experts on YouTube that would tell you how you did it wrong. So really, you couldn't, expect... you couldn't win this. So no, don't worry. This is not There a was no winning this, this segment. This is not a winnable demonstration. I really set you up here, Warren, I'm sorry. Now. Yeah. So now you cut out the Y-bone strip. So we got the one strip of meat. Yep. And then we took, you took out the Y-bone section that runs this. all the way down it. It's not Oof. Slime. Oof. Slime. <laughs> I like that. Right there. It's an ugly like fillet, but it's boneless. Filet. Yeah. It's not bad. Put that in there. To we can clean. Fry that up or whatever, huh? That's cool, man. And I'm glad I didn't try to do this on my own because I would have been so lost. And I would have tried to fillet this like a normal fish and I would have fried it and I'd have been choking on bones. It might have been the end of field trips. Like, and I'm, I'm thinking that part of it probably is because people just don't know how to clean it. And so I've heard that they're bony fish, and they are, but if you know how to get the bones out, then... I mean, I know how, and I still don't like to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It is more work than, like, this rock bass is going to be. It's definitely more work than those rainbow trout were. Okay. I was uh, looking up, you can cook them whole. 
just like a bike and just eat around the bones basically yeah all right guys so it is the next day and we were back here at no bad days campground in the amazing home on wheels just <laughs> taj mahal compared to my rig with warren and his lovely wife amy and josh is back here taking a breather we actually just got done fishing for next week's episode you'll see that soon but we're back here to cook up these pike we're gonna fry up these pike you guys have seen me fry fish plenty so now warren's gonna show us how he his kind of go-to recipe for fried fish and i've never eaten pike i'm really excited about this amy's whipping up some kind of corn mexican corn slaw dip i don't even know what we got a lot going on right now but today was a good day of fishing too, so look forward to that. Next week is going to be awesome. I caught a fish today on a lure that I would have bet you a thousand dollars would never catch a fish, and it did today. Today was exciting. But yeah, we got a couple bourbons poured. We got fish fry going down. He just made a secret sauce, which sounds kind of weird, but it's, <laughs> it's, I tasted it. It's better than you think. <laughs> And yeah, I see what you're doing, so yeah. He's not even waiting for me to do this. So you got Louisiana oh. <laughs> fish fry. That's a just just a go-to. And you added Tony's. Yep, some Tony's hatcheries. You're like bringing the Louisiana to the Black Hills here. This is, this is, I like this. So we got our pike, mm -hmm. some of which are beautiful little square nuggets, thanks to Josh. And some of which are a little bit more complete, but butchered and ugly nuggets, <laughs> thanks to Warren, the two, the two oh, methods. Yeah. But either way, they're all boneless, theoretically. I just need it's a nice, something. Oh, it's beautiful. Nice way. We'll do some big and then some chunks for the tacos. Oh yeah, I forgot we're doing tacos. This guy will cut up. Yeah, yeah. So these bigger pieces, we're gonna cut into a little more manageable chunks. Not bite size, but a couple bites. Taco size, I guess. So toss it in the bag with the batter and shake vigorously. We'll do that one that way and we're gonna do a little different. You're gonna do a different, huh? I don't know what, but we're gonna do a different. Okay. That's a nice flavor. That's beautiful. That must be Josh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it must be Josh's Just flavor. kidding. You're gonna do these what, like in a different batter or something? Yeah, a little different breading. So cool, cool. cool. Yeah, I love it. No wonder I get along with this guy. If you, you got anyone here that watches the show, you know this stuff. Traeger fin and feather. This is my go-to. Yes. It's so good. It's everything. They make great grills. I wouldn't have thought they made great seasonings, but that that stuff's fantastic. Yeah. I'll give credit where credit's due. It's yeah. Traeger's fin. They made feather. it happen. So as you guys saw yesterday, while we were cleaning these fish, there's kind of this routine going on here in the Black Hills where every day about five o'clock dark storm clouds start forming on the horizon. Every, literally every day has been like this. Sunny, beautiful during the day and then stormy in the afternoon. So we're gonna we're gonna get on this. We gotta get on this. But this thing is super cool. I want to show you guys this. Warren's been telling me what's it called? Fire disc? Fire disc out of Texas. Fire disc out of my home state of Texas. This thing is like a propane operated giant wok. He's saying you can cook all kinds of things in this, but one thing you can also do is fry fish. Fire disc, I have never, I, I know nothing about this, but he's been raving about it, bragging on it, and it looks pretty cool. I'm, I'm excited to see how this works. Everything's cool when you gotta use a blowtorch to get it going, there you go. I mean, where I come from, it's called a turkey fryer. You just got it the wrong size wrong bowl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just testing the oil, it's not hot enough. All right, first piece just went in. Oil's not hot enough. So you always want to test your oil with a little piece of batter or a piece of fish when you got 40 pounds of it like we do. It'll be fine, And that's not, not the hot. sizzle we're looking at. No, looking for. not hot enough. That'll still be good, but it's not ideal. Yeah, it'll just have so, a little more uh, grease in the meat. Yeah, well, yeah. Quarters. Official taste test, first taste mm -hmm. test. The first piece that went in, oh, it's hot. Pike. This is the one with Tony's? Uh, you don't even know. Yes. Warren's fired. Yes, it is. Tony's Louisiana fish fry. It's so, it's just gonna hurt me. Oh, it's fantastic, man. That stand up against walleye, walleye. crappie, all that, man. Absolutely. It's white meat. Firm. Super white, flaky. 
delicious. Good crust on the outside. The oil wasn't even hot enough. It doesn't matter. Fantastic. That's so good. Pike. Cold water pike. A lot of people call them trash fish because they're bony. But as you guys learned from these two guys, you just got to know how to clean it. And once you know how to clean it, that's, that's fantastic. And they're really easy to catch, I'd say. And compared to bass and stuff, like they're aggressive. You throw, it's kind of power fishing. You're yep. throwing stuff that you just reel in. I mean, maybe not easy, but it's not overly complicated. If you find the area, you can catch pike. If you find the right out. area. Through the ice. Like if you're camping, oh, if, if you're just looking for some meat. That's right, springtime, you can throw a Coke can with a hook on it and catch pike. That's fantastic, man. So good. You're hired. Took up the rest of the dinner. <laughs> this thing is cool, man. That, never, that looks so good. Out of Texas, my home state, the fire disc, you guys. I knew nothing about this. He was raving about it. I knew that he was just exaggerating, but it turns out he wasn't. This is cool. Man, that's the sizzle you're looking for. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for, for cooking. Coming. This is gonna be so good. How cool is it to meet up with these guys? I don't know them from Adam, met them online, super sketchy. They could have done dirty things to me. I mean, you, just, you, know, you don't know. But what I've learned is traveling around the country, especially in the RV community, it just tends to attract good people and these people are amazing. And here we are doing the RV thing. These guys are full timers just like me. We're cooking these fish outside in mother nature and it was supposed to storm by now. And it's not. The heavens are, are just shining down upon us. This is all just meant to be. And the fish is fantastic, take my word for it. Northern pike, not a trash fish. That was good, I'm ready for the rest of this. We're gonna do some fish tacos. So normally in my kitchen cooks, I just eat the fish and nothing else, because I'm a degenerate. But these people, they're civilized and we're gonna make fish tacos, it's gonna be nice. With the secret sauce. With the secret sauce, Warren's secret sauce. Which, if you're under 18, you can't have it, but the, the rest of us, this is going to be good. It's going to be really good. <laughs> also, Warren, Warren's feeding me bourbon, so just bear with me, you guys, as the narrator here. I'm just, I'm just a bystander now. I'm just here to eat. First batch coming off. Look at this. Northern Pike. Who knew? I guess, I guess people that live up here knew. As a Texas boy, I had no idea. Like, poor man's pike. Dude, that looks fantastic. Like, I'll tell you, man, there's so many great ways to, to cook fish, but fried fish, you it's just to be. can't go wrong. And I tell people a lot in my show, like, if you got someone in your family that just doesn't like fish, if you fry it right, nobody doesn't like this. Dude, nobody doesn't like this. All right, guys, look at this spread. We got the fried fish. We got some slaw. We got this Mexican corn dip. I don't even know what that is, but it smells and looks delicious. We got onions, the sauce, flour tortillas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can honestly, I'm the kind, I would just eat the fish with my fingers and like forget Do everything it. else. I'm, <laughs> Do I'm, whatever you want. There's a lot of fish here. This is gonna be good. A little slaw, green onions, scallions if you're fancy. Scallions. Is it good? Yeah. The corn? Good with that? Yeah. It's just a chip. Fish tacos. Rave reviews. From the chef, which is kind of biased. We're not going to worry about it. <laughs> Jan, what do you think? Yeah, thumbs up. She's got her mouth full. We'll take it. Thumbs up. All you need to know. Josh, good? Yeah, that corn is awesome. I know the fish is good. Man, well, here we are doing a fish catch and cook, and you stole the show here, Amy, with the, with the corn. I'm going to make tacos just to be polite, but really, uh, I could just eat this fish. But I'm gonna load it up, big time. <laughs> Cameraman's choking. Cameraman's choking. <laughs> You're fired. You're fired. You had one job, or <laughs> dude, are you actually okay? <laughs> Should I do the camera and do the? Just start over. No, no. <laughs> Ma'am. Oh, Honestly, that's more entertaining than me making my plate. So don't even worry about it. Yeah, I'm just getting some fish and some onions. And some of the uh, secret Warren's secret sauce, um, which viewer discretion advised. I don't know what this is made of. Here we go. I'm gonna shove this to the side and get some of this corn dip because literally everybody is raving 
about the corn dip. So I'm gonna get some dip, some chips. We got the tacos and we're good to go. We're gonna head outside because it was supposed to be storming by now, but it's not for right now. So we're gonna head outside, enjoy this beautiful weather, and enjoy this amazing meal. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Truly. Wow, she, <laughs> look at this. Maggie, Maggie, the sweetest dog I've met in a long time. Look at her looking back like, how dare you? Yeah, she's so good. mad. She's intentionally facing the other way because we're not feeding her fish tacos and we're not paying attention to her. Look at this. Pike catch and cook. I've already annoyed these people enough with my filming, so I'm just going to take one bite and let you guys know. It's delicious. I already know it. But this is with Warren's secret sauce. I just met the guy yesterday and he's already let me taste it. <laughs> man. It really is, man. You could bottle that. You should bottle that. So they've been inviting me to a kayak fishing trip on the Boundary Waters, the Canadian-U.S. border. Now I'm uh, banned from Canada for life, which is a story we'll get into at another time. So I was asking them how close to Canada they get. He said not that close. So maybe you guys will see next year a series with these two yahoos up in the Boundary Waters, which is, I've heard from many people, just the most epic smallmouth and pike and all kinds of fishing is just so good. But back to the task at hand, the fish is phenomenal. Northern pike, you guys, I had no idea. I thought this was a trash fish. I realize now that most people just don't know how to clean it. If you know how to clean it, which we showed you, it is fantastic. If you had told me this were walleye tacos, I wouldn't have been like, no. There's no way I would have known. It tastes better and catches better. Yeah, right. Northern Pike, you guys. The other, other white meat. This is so fantastic. <laughs> Cannot go wrong. What an incredible time here in the Black Hills of South Dakota. There are more episodes coming up. This is one of those places that I did not have on my list when I was going through the 50 states. As anybody, anywhere I really cared about. And it has quickly skyrocketed to the top five states that I've been to so far in the eastern half of the United States. This place is amazing. It's beautiful. There's so much to offer. The angler or just general outdoorsman. A lot more coming up here from South Dakota, you guys. Thank you so much. Cheers. 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 Incredible people. I didn't know any of these people till I got here, you guys. I met them online. And as far as online goes, they should have been rapists, <laughs> but they're not. They're really incredible people. Get out there, you guys. Come to South Dakota, the Black Hills. If, if it's not on your list of family vacay spots, it should be. It really deserves to be. This is incredible. What a great meal. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. What <clears throat> you got over there, vodka? Little Tito's? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Thank you guys so much. See you next week. I go straight from the bank, gassing up the tank, cranking up the radio, playing all.